Hello again everybody and welcome back to my series of 4K tests, uh, reviews and calibration settings. Somebody asked me if I would show calibration settings for the Sony 43 XD 8305 that I reviewed recently. So here we go. What I've done is set up two picture presets, a Cinema Pro for SDR and a Cinema Home for HDR. It's quite important to have two different ones because the calibration settings for both are slightly different. So let's have a look in advanced settings. Brightness on max. Now that's done because it was done as a daylight room calibration. So it's done for rooms with a lot of ambient light. If you're viewing in a darkened environment, you can always reduce this brightness. Contrast 90 and black level 51. These were done with industry standard test patterns from the Spears and Munsell disc, which you can buy quite cheaply for about £25. They've got a lot of different patterns in them and I will link that below. Black Adjust Off, Advanced Contrast Enhancer Off. It's quite important to have those off when you're doing a calibration. You can always enable them later on. Colour, 63. Quite high from the default 50. But in order to get a proper green response, which is very important when you're doing calibration, you need to have this at 63. Hues at zero. Now I would normally show you uh, an enhanced color management system, but Sony haven't had one for years. In fact, I can't even remember going back about six or seven years, the last time I saw a TV from Sony that had one. So in order to get the best color response, both in SDR and HDR, you can only adjust color and hue have a separate color temperature setting for SDR, Expert 2, because Expert 1 is reserved for HDR. Advanced color temperature, it's important to go into this and because this is where we're going to be doing most of the calibration. We'll do that in a second. And I felt the need to actually put a little bit of live color in. Normally I try not to do this, but in order to get a good green response, I actually had to have live color on low. Advanced color temperature, so let's have a look at here what we've had to tweak. Quite a few things in here. I've had to change the red and the blue gains and the red and the blue biases. I'd always avoid, if you can, touching the green, especially the green gain. It makes a very big difference if you make a very small adjustment and actually I didn't need to touch that or the green bias. However, this alone did not give me a good grayscale. So I had to go in and change some of the adjustment points. So let's go back and have a look at where we've had to make the adjustments. Okay, we've had to do it at one. Minus six for red and minus six for blue. Two, minus 10 for red. Three, didn't have to touch that. Four, nothing. It's important to use a meter with this because doing this by eye is just not impossible really. Six, nothing. Seven, nothing on seven. Eight, uh, just a blue offset of two. Nine, another blue offset of two. And ten. And now I'll show you on the charts what that means in terms of where we are in, in deltas. So here we are, green all the way. I could have got this slightly better, but it would have taken a lot longer and you really wouldn't have seen the benefit. Let's have a look now at other options. Sharpness 40, now you can actually lower this a bit more, but it does get slightly mushy in the detail. I certainly wouldn't have it above 50. If you're sitting further away, you might feel to need to up a little bit. Reality creation I feel doesn't really add too much. It makes it a bit too real, so turn that off. I do have the noise reduction on because it is quite good. Motion. True Cinema actually does work very well for 24p because it gives you less juddering. Film mode actually tries to reconstruct 24p from 30 frame film sources. Video options. Now, this is quite important. If you're calibrating, 
I would be very tempted to change the HDR mode and the color space option to the thing you're calibrating for. So if you're calibrating SDR, turn HDR mode off and also make your color space 709. So change from auto to 709 and change your HDR mode from auto to off. And I do this because some devices that you used to generate the patterns or feed the patterns to the TV don't actually flag properly that they're in HDR mode or the color space. So to give you an example of this, I'm using an Nvidia Shield. It does the HDR flag very well, but it doesn't do the color space flag very well. It'll feed you 2020, but you're actually expecting 709. So your color space will be off. Okay, let's go and have a look now at the other options that I've changed in Cinema Home. Now you'll see immediately the color changes on the TV. So in advanced settings, top three things are exactly the same. Black level slightly up because the black level pattern is slightly different. It shouldn't be, but it actually was on here. So 52 I thought was a better fit. Again, turn contrast enhancer and black adjust off. Color, now look that, that's 82. You have to remember that I'm feeding it Rec 2020 patterns. Um, to get the best out of the TV, the TV cannot do anything near Rec 2020. It can't really do anything near P3. But to get a nice color performance without impacting skin tones too much, I felt you had to turn this to 82. So I would say around 82 is acceptable. If you want to back it off a bit, I reckon you can still get away with about 78. Okay, now you see I've changed the color temperature to expert one. It means I can have a different memory for these adjustments. So again, I've made adjustments in the basic two point white balance setting. Nothing at one, nothing at two. So you see that the differences here are quite vast because at the low end I've actually had to make no 10 point adjustments and in fact if I remember correctly I don't think I've had to make any 10 point adjustments here at all. The two point adjustments have taken care of it. See nothing at all which is great. Live colour I've turned off. If you turn this on it doesn't make a huge amount of difference with the colour at 82 but it doesn't make it any more accurate either. Sharpness I've backed off a little bit because with HDR it's only available in 4k um, so you don't need as much sharpness because it's actually there anyway. Round equation off, these are all the same. Motion again I've put on true cinema and film mode high. So those are the same things and I've, again I would suggest if you're calibrating make sure HDR mode is in HDR not auto. The reason that's changing is I'm not giving it an HDR source at the moment. HDR video range auto and color space auto. If you're looking for HDR test patterns, there aren't very many around at the moment. I would suggest you use Ryan Masicola's test patterns. You do have to pay for them, but they are very comprehensive. The cost is $25 and they are available via a download. Do make sure that when you're using them, you're using an HDR capable device to play them from. So an HDR Blu-ray player or an Nvidia Shield running SPMC, which works quite well. Now I would love to show you some proper HDR stuff, but unfortunately it's all copyrighted, so I can't. YouTube will clamp down on me and stop me publishing any videos. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to drop me a line at the bottom and I'll do my best to answer them. And I hope to be publishing another video soon.